Assalamu alaikum guys. So a lot of you have been asking in the comment section of the previous videos as to how I learned Arabic. So in this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into my journey for learning Arabic. Let's get into it. So it started from 2016. I had just completed my degree. I did a degree in mathematics and economics. And after that, I did not want to go directly into work. So I decided to take a gap year and focus on Arabic because I'd always had this burning desire to understand what was said in the Quran. Um, and I, I just wanted to go beyond the filter of translation. So I wanted to find out how it worked under the hood. How were the sentence, sentences constructed and how I can understand this without the filter of any translation. So I wanted to go deep. So I told my family that uh, I'll be taking a gap year. And my father and my brother, my father, Rahimahullah, he's no longer with us. May Allah have mercy on him, grant him Jannah. My father and my brother were very, very supportive in this. So I did not have to worry about any finances for the next year. I was just focused solely on learning Arabic for one year. So I had to make the best use of that time that I had. So what I did was um, I had been following Ustad Numan Ali Khan for some time. And I, had liked, I liked his teaching style. His teaching style is very, very easy to follow. And the way he gives lectures, I, I, I kind of uh, liked the way he did that. So I decided to enroll onto some of his grammar courses. And at that time, the dream program, uh, I'm not sure if it was up. I think it was only on site. But the online version of the dream program was called Access. So that was Access 1, Access 2, and Access 3. That was an equivalent online version of the dream program that is maybe offered now on site. But for sure, I know that right now, the same material that is used in the dream program can be um, obtained from Baina TV. So a subscription to Baina TV and you can get all of the materials from the dream program. So I started with Ustad Numan Ali Khan. I did access one uh, where we studied the basics of Nahaw and Sarf. For those of you who don't know what Nahaw and Sarf are, Nahaw and Sarf, Nahaw is grammar and Sarf is morphology. They are the cornerstones of Arabic grammar. So Nahu is, for example, if I say the sentence Daraba Zaydun Ahmed, Nahu lets me know exactly what these words are doing in the sentence. Uh, if you studied Ajurmiya, you will know that it's Tagiru Awakhir al Kalimat, changing the endings of the words. So in this case, I said Daraba Zaydun Ahmed. So in Nahu we learn that if you want to know what these are doing in the sentence, Daraba is the verb. Zaydun is the subject and Ahmed is the direct object. So in Arabic terms, Daraba is the fi'l maadi, mabni al al-fat. Um, Zaydun is the fa'il marfu wa alamat raf al-dhamma al-zahirat wa ala akhirihi. And Ahmed is the maf'ul bihi. Maf'ul bihi means the direct object of the sentence. So if you want the full passing of it, it's maf'ul bihi mansub wa alamat nas bihi al-fatat al-zahirat wa ala akhirihi. That didn't make sense to most of you. That's fine. Maybe some of the Arab students who learned some of the patterns might uh, know how to say that. So that's pretty much Nahu. Now, Sarf is understanding the conjugation of the words. So I said Daraba here, but I did not say Darabat. Why? Because Daraba is used for the masculine form. Who are Daraba? He hit. So Daraba, in this case, Zayd is a masculine. So I said Daraba. So Sarf is pretty much understanding the right conjugation of the words. And why did I not say Duriba, which is passive? That is because that was a direct object here, which cannot be used in a passive. So uh, pretty much understanding um, the conjugation of the words and how we do that. So that's pretty much Nahu and Sarf. So I did Axis 1 and Axis 2 pretty much took this to another level where we studied advanced sentence structures and advanced Nahu and advanced Sarf. So here in advanced Sarf, we used to study, for those of you who know Sarf, um, um, we studied the conjugation of uh, fi'ls that are naqis, uh, um, so that have a weak letter inside them, front, uh, in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, and things like that. So it just got a little bit more advanced with what we were studying in um, Nahu and Sarf from Axis 1. Axis 3, I did not, for some reason, enroll in Axis 3, um, but I decided to take uh, another route. So Axis 3 was pretty much going into texts and understanding how to read them without the harakat. Instead, what I decided to do was I enrolled onto lqtoronto.com. Now, for those of you who don't know lqtoronto.com, this is pretty much an online free course of the Medina books, the famous Medina book series by Dr. V. Abdul Rahim, Rahimahullah. 
amazing, amazing course. And LQToronto.com is actually um, all of its materials on the site are free of charge, including access to all of the PDFs that are used, the resources, the answer keys. All of that is free of charge. You don't have to pay a cent for it. And Ustad Asif Meher Ali, you might have known him by some of his famous songs that um, that uh, we pretty much have come to love and adore. So these are some of his songs if you haven't known about him. If I say dun, it's marfu. If I say dun, it's mansu. If I say din, it's majru. So I learned um, the Medina books. I did Medina book one, Medina book two. And by the time it came to Medina book three, my year was up. And at that time, I was actually applying to um, find a job uh, or actually not find a job. I was actually applying to do a master's where I am now in the UK. So, um, so I had to kind of wrap up some of my studies before I kind of went and started my master's. So then I came and did my master's here in the UK. And during that year, I did not focus that much on my Arabic studies uh, in terms of doing intensive courses like I did. But all I wanted to do was the knowledge that I had gained. I just wanted to keep it, uh, not forget it. So what I ended up doing was taking courses online from various different institutes. So I took some courses that were completely in Arabic from Kutuf Academy, um, which I will, put the I will put the links of all these in the description. So I took some Arabic courses from Kutuf Academy, which were very good. And the teacher was solid. He knew he was a, mashallah, very, very good sheikh. Um, and then I took some courses on um, on Sibowe Institute. Some of you might have heard of it, some of you might have not heard of it, but Sibowe Institute also offers some great courses on Nahu and Sarf and also Balagha, uh, understanding uh, different aspects of why the sentence structure in the Quran, the different patterns of plurals and uh, how they affect the meaning. Now, these are some things that you might only like once you kind of know Nahu and Sarf. If you don't know it, this would be really abstract and kind of boring. So this was something that I really had interest in and I kind of took to keep me interested and engaged in the content that I had learned in order not to forget it. So that was what I did um, um, during this time. And then I ended up finding a job and alhamdulillah, I'm still uh, pretty much... Um, in the same field that I studied. So I did math and econ and then I did my master's also associated with maths. So now I'm kind of working as, a, as an engineer. So that is also, alhamdulillah, in line with what I had studied, which was, which, was, uh, which was nice. So then in order to solidify, in order to solidify my understanding, because I was doing, I, after, after Bayna's program of access and the Medina books, I was just doing a few bits and pieces of different courses from different institutes. So then I enrolled on Al Salam Institute. Al Salam Institute uh, is co-founded by a very prominent scholar who is also one of the advisors or teachers of Ustad Noman Ali Khan, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Akram Nadwi. He's the co-founder of this institute and I've always thought about studying in some way under him. So I found Al Salam Institute is offering a one year intensive course in Arabic. And when I looked at the content of that course, I was like, it's a no-brainer for me because it was pretty much everything that I had learned in the beginning, and now it is culminate. It is culminated all into this one course that I'm going to do for the next one year. So it will be a great opportunity for me to solidify my understanding of what I had already learned. So I decided I'm going to take it. And alhamdulillah, that one year was extremely enjoyable. Yes, I had to work um, quite a bit to kind of uh, understand a few different things in Nahu and Sof and go a little deeper. But it was a great, great revision for me. And also, whatever knowledge that I had, it corrected it and took it to the next level, pretty much. So Alhamdulillah, it's an amazing course. And I'll put the link to you, uh, link for you all in the description uh, down below. So then they have, Al Salam has a five-year Alimiya program. Before enrolling onto the Alimiya program, I decided that, you know what? fine i now have a very solid understanding of nahu and sarf but still i have no idea how to speak the language i had no idea how to speak arabic still because understanding nahu and sarf is a specific skill that takes time and effort and speaking is a separate skill that takes time and effort and we need to respect this and so 
how I would anal how I would give you this analogy is that suppose you're building a car and Nahu and Sarf would give you a very powerful engine to the car. But without the ability to speak and use the vocabulary, it's like having a car with a powerful engine and no wheels to go around to different places and enjoy the car. I was missing those wheels. I was missing that aspect of it. For the past two years, that's pretty much what I have been focusing on uh, or devoting most of my free time into doing. It's learning how to speak Arabic. So um, how, how did I start? So I started taking courses online. So I found a website called Preply and I decided to find some of the teachers on Preply. I did not end up having a good experience with one of the teachers that I used there. Uh, not a great experience, but it does not mean it, that Preply is a bad website that you should not go to. No, there might be amazing teachers over there and I don't discourage you from going there. So then I decided to stop with Preply and find another avenue and that's when I found italki. And I found that when you're choosing a teacher, it's important to choose a teacher, maybe a, this, this might be a bit biased, but the senior they are or if they have a doctorate or a PhD in Arabic, it's much better because then the dialects are not going to come in too much right like it does come in the younger individuals but that is not that does not mean that there are young individuals who cannot teach you no but this is just something to watch out for so i found a bunch of teachers on italki that are extremely good in helping you how to speak and i ended up taking the classes with some of them and that's pretty much where i am now so i try on a daily basis to kind of speak around one speak around an hour at least one hour per day uh, with these teachers and i've been doing that especially that one hour per day for the past six months but for the first one and a half years it was pretty much twice a week uh, three times a week the principle is do whatever you can do whatever you can and inshallah allah will make a way for you to um put barakah in it now do you guys need to follow the same path that i followed uh, in terms of learning Arabic where it was for the first couple of years and this I said we start I forgot to mention something I started back in 2016 and now it's 2023 so for the first six years I was pretty much keeping up with uh, my understanding of Nahaw and Sarf and I only started speaking in the past two years it, it has taken a long time but you need to follow the same path that I did absolutely not I would say if you want to learn Arabic what are your goals do you want to learn Quran if you want to learn Quran, then you don't need to learn how to speak necessarily at the beginning. And you would be perfectly fine and enjoy your journey if you started with something, um, understanding Nahu and Sarf. Now, there might be some people that say, if you want to learn Arabic, the wrong way to go about it is learning that uh, in Arabic, there are three kinds of words as ism, fi'l, and harf. And I would tend to disagree with that because it depends on who your teacher is. If they put it to you in such a way that you enjoy it, there's nothing wrong. I don't see that as a wrong way of learning. Is maybe more of like a wrong way of teaching if they put it to you that way and you just find it very boring. But the way Ustad Doman, when I started with him, the way he put it, it was enjoyable and I, I, I did not find it boring at all at any uh, level that I studied up with him. But if, if you see the Medina books, they go through it another route. They teach you vocabulary from the very beginning along with teaching you the grammatical principles. Now, some of you might find this method enjoyable. Go ahead and start with that then do whatever is enjoyable to you as long as you can be consistent with that that is the first thing that i learned the other most important thing that i learned is if you really want to achieve something in life if you really really truly want to achieve something unless and until your mindset shifts from that being a want or something that you should do to something that you need to do you will always be working below your potential you will always be working at suboptimal capacity it was only when i realized this that my i noticed my skills in speaking especially just began to just improve so much because then my lifestyle in my free time changed to accommodate for this need that i now had to learn arabic to learn to speak arabic so, uh, which, which, which currently I'm focusing on right now. So I had the foundation in Nahaw and Saf, but now it was learning to speak Arabic. And in the beginning, I was like, I was doing a few courses here and there, but 
I was waiting for one course to finish and I was thinking wait, 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 when the course finished, like, okay, fine, now what do I do? I'm like left alone. And I did not have a direction to go to because I was waiting for, okay, what's the next course that's going to give me the motivation that I need to succeed? But if you think about it, if our motivation is driven by something external rather than something internal that's driving us, we will always be working at suboptimal capacity. We will always be working below our potential in whatever we want to achieve, whether it's learning a language or learning how to, um, uh, uh, learning how to play a sport, whatever it is in your life. You need to make whatever it is that you want to achieve a driving desire, a need for you. That is why a lot of people that you find that have succeeded in life, when they hit rock bottom, there is nothing else but to go up. There is a need for them. It's not a want. They have no choice. There is a need for them to be successful. And that is why they can go to greater heights because it's a need for them. It's not a want. That is something very powerful that I learned. So once I learned that, I tried in my free time. And also it's what I'm doing for my profession is a passion of mine. I like uh, programming and I le like learning about how to manage data. And that is, that is my job and that is something that I like. But in my free time, I also had this burning desire to learn Arabic. So I had to find a way to cut out the fat, cut out the things that wasted my time. So what I did was I tried to, in my environment that I'm in, change it to something that is conducive to learning. Whether it's buying a bunch of Arabic books that I did not understand at the time, that I did not know how to read, and just keep it in my bookshelf. And over time, just looking at those books there and being in that environment where I'm just covered by books in Arabic will definitely change your perspective. Okay, fine, now I need to start learning to read and starting to take it more seriously. So that environment, changing that environment around you is part of changing that lifestyle that you need to succeed. So it's that mindset that it all comes from making it a need, a burning need inside you that you need to learn it. Otherwise, if you, it's always a should, should I learn Arabic? Yeah, it would be nice to learn Arabic, but it's not a need for me to learn Arabic. Then you won't be taking that extra step to succeed. Once you do that, you will find that your skills are getting better and better and there's more baraka in your skills with the little time that you're able to spend. Whether it's five, whether it's half an hour, whether it's 15 minutes, even if you spend that amount of time and you know that you need to do this, you will automatically find that you're consistent with it. And over time, that half an hour will just be, or that 15 minutes will just become 20 minutes, 25 minutes. You will find that when your mindset shifts to being, to needing to do that, you will be more consistent. Consistency will, consistency will come. And through consistency, uh, belief will come. Self-belief that you can, okay, fine. Now I see myself improving. Now I can do it. And all of those things will happen through changing your mindset. This is the most important skill. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting for external things to give you motivation rather than that motivation being driven from within you, which is the most powerful place for it to be driven by, from within you. So that is... Pretty much essentially what I wanted to share with you in this video. Um, and I hope that you found that beneficial. Um, yeah, again, do you need to follow this path to learn Arabic? No, it depends on your goal. If your goal is to learn the Quran, you can do courses in Nahaw and Sof and you'll be well on your way to inshallah learning it. If your goal is to learn speaking, you don't need to learn Nahaw and Sof to know how to speak. Of course, will it help you? It will definitely help you because you will know how to construct the sentences. Remember, the engine is the most powerful is the most important thing in the car. Without that, it won't, it won't, I, you can move it with other tires, but it's just going to be tedious. It will just make it so much efficient for you to move the car with the engine. You don't need to know Nahan Sof to learn how to speak. Maybe may be better off starting with a course that teaches you how to speak first. Now, whether it's about learning a dialect in Arabic or learning Fusha, I've already mentioned that in my previous video, whether that what I believe, if you have the time, if time is not a constraint for you, then you should start by learning Fusha because it's the most efficient way to learn. Hope you found that video useful and hope you find my journey inspiration, inspirational for you. And hope you found the principles that I shared that have helped me beneficial. And inshallah, I'll see you all in another video. Uh, before I go, I want to mention that there is a dying need today to revive 
classical Arabic, revive Quranic Arabic, revive that pure form of Arabic, which is Fusha. And many of us um, have taken this for granted, where we, we've tried to find the easy way out that we want to learn Arabic to impress uh, somebody. Uh, we want to learn Arabic to know how to order a you know, shawarma in a restaurant or things like that. Uh, but remember, guys, the intention is key here. We want to be some, some people that revive the lost um, form of Arabic, which is the pure classical Arabic. We want to revive that. That is fundamentally important. That is why I think that if you want to go about learning Arabic, don't go about learning a dialect first. Go about learning Fusha. And through Fusha, the dialects, any dialect that you want to learn will become easier because the foundations are grounded in you. Also, we want to be a nation that not only learns how to speak Arabic, learns, learns Fusha, but we also want to be a nation that builds leaders, not just academics. We want to be fluent in Arabic and also we want to be the best in our fields that we are doing. We want to be the best in mathematics, economics, uh, engineering, AI, and at the same time, be very, very proficient in our language, in the language of our deen, in the language of our book, in the language of the Quran. We want to be people who have the knowledge of both. Because if you look at the golden age of Islam, the scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, and so on and so forth, they were, they were not only proficient in, um, in Islamic sciences, they were proficient in Islamic sciences plus an array of other sciences. To be called a scholar at that time, it was not just a scholar of Islam. There was a scholar in various different fields in the dunya, in mathematics, in uh, astronomy, in engineering, in science, etc. So we need to go to that extra level to be and, and be the leaders that, and revive the lost tradition of leadership that we once had in the Islamic golden age. So that is what, inshallah, we will be trying to revive. And hopefully my journey and the tips that I share on this channel and so on and so forth will be inspirational for you to take your studies um, to the next level in Arabic and whatever you're doing in life to help you or inspire you to do it better. This is Akil Ahmed and I will see you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.